Well, good morning, good morning, good morning. And how are we today? Uh, it is a great day. Uh, it is snowing. And it is a pleasure to be with you this morning. Yeah, I'm happy with this. I think we're going to go with this microphone this morning. And uh, just testing out new equipment. Doesn't have much to do with the uh, material. Uh, just trying to make it a little better, a little clearer, a little smoother. Uh, and still be able to stay mobile and get up at the top of the mountain. Today, uh, as I came up, uh, I wonder to myself, over all of the years and all of the tapes I've made, what makes a tape really good? What, um, what are the contributing factors? What do I look for when I come up here? And I began to notice that as I look at things, I have <laughs> evaluations and observations um, as to what I think should make something better or worse. This morning as I was coming up the hill and I was observing the tape, I had gotten the tape out of one of the boxes where there weren't too many and I was wondering if the tape was indeed a good tape. Because we have so many boxes of tape, sometimes we have boxes where, you know, tapes don't work or they get, you know, banged up or, or they don't turn right or, you know, several different types of factory defects. And so as I was coming up the hill, I also was thinking to myself, I hope this is going to be a good mechanically working tape so that, you know, I, when you're inspired, you want to catch it all. And then coming up, I was... I was looking around and I noticed that it, it's snowing. I don't know what date it is. It's uh, it's May something. This is the uh, this is the April tape. I'm doing it in May. Um, <laughs> Self-explanatory. And the next thing I started to notice was the amount of snow. And then I started running through the topics that I could talk about. And then I noticed that just because I had talked about a topic four years ago doesn't mean I couldn't repeat the topic now and put out a whole different piece of material four years later. I was inspired by that. Um, I kept coming along. And then I started to notice that I did. I had these ideas and evaluations on what made a good tape. And I thought to myself, well, gee, Dennis, those are judgments, evaluations. You don't want to use those either. And then... And then I observed that in my <coughs> awareness, and then I began to notice that people asked me, well, what year tapes? What tape series should I buy? What's the best year? What should I do? And I think to myself, well, they're all perfect. They're all great. And then I noticed that as I was making this series, the, to understand the simplicity and the complexity of which I speak to you, it really requires some background material. Then I began to notice that sometimes one workshop is a little better than another workshop, only based on my feelings or my evaluations or my perceptions of how it went for me as a personality. Then I began to notice that sometimes as a personality, I ran my personality into my godness and my godness into my personality. Sort of like, hey, you got peanut butter in my chocolate and you got chocolate in my peanut butter. And then I began to notice that even though I could understand the separateness of it, my totality understood the wholeness of it. I noticed that in the last tape and the tape before it, I gave a part of my personality. I got a flat tire, I responded to a road condition, how I reacted as a personality, how I reacted as a God being, and I shared all those different old things, how I stayed in present time, how I did this, how I did that. I noticed to some people who would never have heard a Stepping Into Consciousness tape, if they heard that tape, they might not really know what I was even talking about. And yet it was an experience in life that was perfect. For several years, as I've taught different things in my class, and nobody's really heard this material except you for right here, right now, because I just put it together right here, right now. So not even workshops have heard this. As I was coming up, there is a thing that I say, whatever you give your truth to becomes your reality. And as I say that truth, sometimes I wonder, as a personality, do I truly understand it? And 
because I have noticed that there are different levels of that truth. And because I've only had the insight on this particular truth, going up the mountain at this moment, my looking for the correct words so that Dennis, my personality, is that individualized piece of the whole, can also understand it as, as I speak it out. So as if I slowly pick my words, that's me wanting to truly understand within and without. So share with me in this experience, because I love you. Um, oh, and this is Mother's Day. That's what day this is. It's Mom's Day. Thank you, moms. Thank you for for having for having all of us who are humans. And thank you, Mom, the planet Earth, for you know for being the material from which we're built. And, and thank you, Mom, that aspect of God that loves us so much it just made us out of nothing and, and thank you whatever goes beyond that into terms of sound into light into essence beyond that where the knowing goes beyond here's a happy day to you and thank you for inspiring me within this day so as I taught, and as I teach these truths, and the one that I've been working on for years, because sometimes I say, whatever you give your truth to becomes your reality. And then sometimes there are feelings and knowingness with inside of me that says, I don't know about that sometimes. And I've always searched for the perfect example that could give me an insight and a quick understanding and how I could actually perceive that in a terms of a true value. Because sometimes I would notice that I would give truth to something and it still wouldn't necessarily physically, linearly manifest. And you know what I mean? In a, in a certain kind of a way. So as I searched through this particular truth, and as a personality and as a divine essence, because it's a team effort as a whole, you know, as I searched to get in that understanding, this is what finally un unveiled itself to me coming up the hill, because I was running through all this other material, you know, and, and I noticed that I did have attachments to what is a good tape and what is not a good tape, and, and what is good workshop and what it isn't a good workshop even though I noticed that they always continuously to get better every now and then I hit one and I look and I go well it could have been better and the key is it's never outside of myself and it I noticed that the teaching is good and the teaching is perfect sometimes it's um it's the location sometimes it's the day sometimes it's um it's the perception that the entire group is working with and so I noticed that it's not so much me, or I, or us, or you. It's more the way that the day allows itself. It allows itself for us to see it in a certain way, and we still evaluate and perceive it then, from a certain way. And sometimes it doesn't make sense to me as Dennis, the personality. And Dennis, the personality, has looked for a way for different things to make sense beyond the personality so that the wholeness can understand it. Now, I want to take a simple case, a simple example. I drive in this truck that I'm in for oh, <laughs> for years. During the winter, it's what gets me up the mountain. It's... Um, it goes places where other vehicles don't go. It's my pride and joy. I've had this from when I still lived in the woods for years. It was a part of of me that that I love. <laughs> so needless to say, I don't necessarily have attachment to the truck, but I have a respect and a love and a caring for it. A caring that goes beyond. Now, within the truck, I know everything that it does. I know every 
every little sound that it makes, every little thing that, that happens to it, I feel it. And over the years, as engines begin to wear, and because being a mechanic from probably age 13 or 14, and, you know, and being around cars and driving cars and racing cars was truly my life's joy, I have an affinity with him that goes beyond. As trucks age, you begin to hear their age just like as as we, in a physical form, go through time, we begin to understand how different parts within ourselves change. Within the truck, it's some parts wear out. In us, it changes. We are a living essence that replaces itself. The truck is an essence of form that has the ability to have itself replaced by us or it wears itself out in different aspects. We, however, as human beings, in the form like the truck, correlate, or can be correlated easily. We have a divine essence inside which has the ability to repair through our self-love the form, or the shell, sort of like the truck, or the inside part that drives the truck, our consciousness. See, like the driver who can go out and either wear the truck out and then go out and replace the parts with new things, the consciousness is sort of like in the truck, driving the truck, which is your physical form. And it can wear the truck out or it can replace through divine essence parts. Okay, now we're going to use this parallel in this example. Oh, that was my stomach growling. Um, it wasn't growling, it was gurgling. <laughs> growling makes it sound like it was upset or something. <laughs> now, my truck started to make little tiny tappet sounds. Now, tappet sounds are these little tiny sounds that go tick, 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 tick. And I have a V8 which means I have 16 of these little lifters, tappets, that can do this. Now because as a mechanic over the years your ear becomes trained. It knows which side that tappet is on, which makes it from 16 down to 8, because you have two for each cylinder. And then you begin to identify which cylinder it is and which tappet it is that is becoming a problem and you realize that because they're hydraulic lifters, one of the springs is collapsing, and the oil in, the, in that particular valve is not working right. That's how the engine works in that aspect. And when the engine is cold, it's and it gets louder. And when the engine gets warm, it mellows out, because eventually, even though it's worn out, it'll still fill up with oil, and it'll work its way back to normal. Now, when you drive a truck over a, a series of years, you begin to know those little sounds. And I found that tappet a year or so ago. And observed it as it got louder and followed all the tappet sounds that indicated a bad tappet. And I would tell myself that's a bad tappet. And I would audibleize to the mechanics and to friends that that was a bad tappet. Now, if whatever you give your truth to becomes your reality, there's a part of me on a certain linear form that would believe that <clears throat> that tappet was going bad because that was my reality. And I could hear it. After a year and a half and putting it off and putting it off and putting it off, I had it checked in the truck told him I wanted that tappet adjusted and, and knew that in my heart of hearts where that knowingness exists that it was a tappet, it was a bad tappet there was no ifs, ands, or buts about it I figured that after 20 some years of repairing and working on engines I knew what a tappet was and that was that and because my truth was behind it the reality was simple, tappet was bad when I got the truck back however <clears throat> the mechanic told me that the tappet was not bad and that 
It actually was coming from another place, this noise. And I was stunned. <clears throat> and I was actually... I was actually uh, quite pleased because the mechanical part that I thought was wrong, it was going to cost me a fortune to fix. Actually, I had nothing wrong with it. And I stopped this morning, and I was driving up the, the hill, and sure enough, there was that little noise. And, and I thought, wow, wait a minute now. One of the things that you say is, whatever you give your truth to becomes your reality. You really believe that there was something wrong with that tappet, and it didn't work. There was nothing wrong with that tappet, Dennis. How can that all work together then? You gave it truth, brother, and you gave it so much truth that as a divine being, period, that tappet should have broke down just on the amount of belief structure that you had behind the idea that there was something wrong with that tappet and it had to be fixed, only to find that it wasn't that at all. And that if your truth structure, and if that divine part of you was so clear, it would have broke the tappet down just to validate your reality. Because as a God being, you have that much clarity. And all of a sudden, two and two didn't make four. First thing that Dennis did after he looked at that particular situation was he ran to his godness. <laughs> hey, that's a brain twister. <laughs> so I figured if this was happening to me, it must be happening to you. Maybe not in terms of a lifter, but in terms of expecting perhaps a given result or anticipating a particular reaction and, and really knowing in your heart of hearts that that was really what was supposed to be happening, only to discover like whammo slammo, that's not what we got. So, Dennis, <clears throat> looking at that and going, wow, this would be a good one that I would ask Dennis, the teacher, when he was standing up in front of the classroom, because Dennis, the teacher, has observed, while he's taught that material, that there was not a complete state of clarity in himself, therefore there was not a complete state in some of the individuals when he taught it. Some of the other individuals, however, already had it. That's because we're all different kinds of people, and looked and said, well, of course, that's perfectly uh, accurate. I knew that it was accurate, otherwise I couldn't teach it. But Dennis, personality, hey, way back in there, every now and then, had something like this come up in his life, and really wanted to see, well, what's this about, man? And I don't want this explained through some sort of karmic reaction and all this other bizarre stuff. I want a simple common sense answer. As I took a quick look at it, what I began to realize from the God part was, whatever it is, it's perfect. Which allowed me to see the situation without a right or wrong, or a good or a bad, or a plus or a minus. I began to realize that Dennis, because he truly believed it in his heart, the lifter should have went bad. The lifter, in terms of divinity, will go bad, because the essence so wished it. In lengths of time and in lengths of evolution, Dennis, the personality, did wish that the lifter was bad. Well, actually, he didn't wish that the lifter was bad. He never got into the fact that the lifter was bad. He just believed, um, he didn't never wish that it was bad. He knew that it was bad. Therefore, he said it was bad. Therefore, that truth will happen. And the truth of that is, is that let's just say that over the next, oh, making it simple, two million years, the lifter will become not just bad, but it'll just rust away. Completing the truth, the dentist said, the lifter is bad. The lifter may or may not go bad. It probably will, though, sooner than the rest, because the thought is definitely out there. But the timing in which the thought is going to manifest itself depends wholly on the density of the situation and the density of the matter, not the rightness or the wrongness of the situation. Now, let me give you an insight into that. As a concept, I perceived that the energy was negative because I had to repair the lifter. 
therefore, because the lifter is magnetic, my mind locking into that magnetic field will eventually make that lifter go bad. The timing of it going bad is based on its density. Because a lifter is made out of steel and cast iron, uh, it's going to take a long time to change it. Nevertheless, it will change sooner than the others. It will change sooner, not because Dennis said that it was wrong or it was broken, but because Dennis put a charge on it stronger than a charge on the other tappets or lifters in the car. But the truth of the matter is, because of its dense matter, and because Dennis was only perceiving it from the heavy physical plane, the time for the truth to transpire will take a long time in evolution. Now, whatever you give your truth to must become your reality. Now, we're working with concepts, so watch closely how this works. Whatever you give your truth to becomes your reality. I gave truth to the fact that that lifter would have to wear out sooner. It does not mean that I have to see it wear out, which releases me from my time commitment to the subject material. I have the ability to replace the lifter because I feel that it's worn out. <laughs> but this particular dimension through the mechanic tells me that there's nothing wrong with it. And so therefore I have to do nothing about it. It's like a lesson that I learn and the lesson is, hey, guess what? This was perfect in the first place. But because you had so much energy on this, because this is what you needed to learn and grow, in evolutions from here in a couple billion years to keep your truth solid this lifter will become totally bad and useless just as you had wished but because your divinity is in present time it releases that picture now it's sort of like a lesson we're each learning something in life we're trying to judge it right or wrong or good or bad and then all of a sudden you know somebody comes along and goes you know what you looked at this lesson totally wrong and you go oh my goodness I did but I learned because now that I can look at it, I can see that, oh wow, I had pictures that it was negative. I see that it could have become negative. However, the universe was allowing me to learn a lesson on a very, very gross lesson. A tappet. Something that Dennis could not really alter because it was too thick of a steel for Dennis's energy to really alter. It was going to alter it in time, but not right here and right now and it wanted to show me that lesson so eventually because it was so dense and so hard now here's the parallel some of our lessons in life are so dense and so hard that it's easier to learn and see the lesson as neither right or wrong but to have the universe go hey you know what there's nothing wrong with this thing or right with this thing in the first place you're just kind of learning something here and you go oh wow it's a learning experience Okay, now, what I'm doing is I'm comparing things, sort of like me driving the car, or our consciousness driving the car, or our consciousness driving the physical unit. Remember the parallel I used earlier? The uh, consciousness is sort of like the thing that can either <clears throat> fix the physical um, body through love and essence, or replace parts, sort of like you can do with the truck. Okay, now, the lifter is a lesson, and you can perceive this lesson on any level. Now, the lesson that we were working on for the observation is, it's never outside of ourself. How come I didn't change the lifter when my love believed that it should? Okay, as I looked at the lifter, my love will change it and it will change it in another time because it was too dense to actually change it now because it really didn't matter that much to me the lifter didn't really instantaneously magically presto change oh change just like your realities in life don't instantly manifest presto change oh but the dense ones the physical ones that we have the massive attachments to just like I had the attachment to the fact without a question of a doubt that the lifter was bad when that wasn't necessarily the key at all. 
Stay with me. This is a heavy lesson. Just hang in there because it can be seen on so many levels. And yet, no heavy levels at all. <laughs> now, on the other side of this tape, we're going to take a look into, well, if I say it's never outside of our, or not never outside of ourselves, but whatever you give your truth to becomes your reality. If I really gave my truth to that lifter, why didn't it change? Well, the reason it didn't change is based on densities of our attitude of right and wrong and good and bad. Now, on certain heavy, thick mental attitudes or physical attitudes, we have certain belief structures that this is how it should be. Where on the divine plan, that, 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 that reality may not be real because nature may have something else that we couldn't see and as a personality, we can't really override her powers and her abilities. That's why sometimes when, well, if it's what we give our truth to, how come this didn't change? And then I'd look at it and I'd go, well, because nature is stronger than my truth and my reality. And then I'd go, well, that can't be because I'm saying that whatever you give your truth to should become your reality, which means you should be able to override nature. You should be able to override those other forces, those other obstacles, that um, heavy steel in the lifter. You should be able to alter it. You should be able to change it. And this is where those contradictions in my mind was. And so let's get to the other side of the tape now and sort of explain that particular part because I don't really want to run because I don't really want to run out on this tape and I know I'm getting close to the end and I want to get to these other parts because they're very important so okay I'll catch you now on the other side thank you